What's up guys? Uh, today we have a fun one. Um, it's probably the most requested thing I have in my comments and messages. Today we are finally going to tackle the dash swap for the third gen. Um, currently working on it right now. Um, I've already started it just to kind of tinker around with it. Um, but just to show you. Uh, I got the dash sitting in there right now. Uh, lighting's terrible. Uh, this video is not going to be a how-to by any means, but it'll definitely be um, a guide and kind of show you what to expect. Uh, this is my first time doing the swap, so I'm definitely learning as I'm going. Uh, I've found a few tools that have helped me so far, though. Uh, most of the write-ups on thirdgen.org are useless now just because photo buckets uh, fucking asshole and they took off all their links um, but I still have some stuff um, it's a pretty straightforward swap so far you got to remember that I've got an LS1 so most of you guys with a small block um, it's kind of going to be a little bit different the main important thing you could get two Haynes manuals and one for each car uh, like a 2000 Camaro and then one for your 80s Camaro and then if you can get the pinout layout it's pretty simple you just connect same wire that does the same thing to your other harness and you just kind of splice it all together I know a lot of fourth I know a lot of guys are skipping that step they have a fourth gen body harness and it just it's all plug and play um, kind of wish I would have did that from the get-go honestly you've got your dash already pulled out right now you should have a cluster of wires and speakers sensors, um, heater and AC controls. First things first, you want to take this bar that goes across that the bottom of the dash was bolted to. So you want to unbolt it from the sides, left and right over here. And then there's two studs that go down here on each side. There's a nut on each one. You don't have to undo the nut all the way, but just give it some slack because we want to slide this out. This bracket does not work with our new dash. All right, on the side, uh, you've got this um, mount. This was used to hold up your factory uh, dash. And then at the bottom of it, there is another mount here. Uh, it's used to mount the crossbar. We need to keep this part right here but we're going to ditch this top part because it's keeping the dash up too high. Um, it's welded up top here, and then there's another tab right here that's welded. So what I'm gonna do is chop it here, and then chop it up top. So you wanna cut it up top there, cut that off, and then you wanna cut this halfway down because we're still gonna use this part of the bracket right here. And then once you do that on both sides, the dash will sit nice and flush uh, right up against where you want it to bolt on. So this should slip right out. Uh, all right, and then just pull it out from the car. All right, so I have the factory third gen one uh, that's the bottom one and then the top big black one is the fourth gen dash now the biggest difference in them is if you notice this one bolts flat um, just straight up and then this one's got a 90 degree angle so this one curves up uh, so we have to change the way these bolt up to fit this one on uh, other than that, this is set up for the passenger side glove box to bolt onto. Um, over here, uh, it's still slotted the exact same way, so it's still going to slide on your steering column. And then the rest of it's just a little beefier. About the same weight, nothing really special about them. You just have to get this. I pulled this from the fourth gen dash, and what a pain in the ass. Another thing I'm pretty stoked about is this already has the bracket for the OBD2 sensor 
So now I can bolt mine uh, in a specific spot and I don't have to create something. Okay, so the bracket slides in uh, nice and evenly. Um, I just have to create a bracket for each side to get it mounted uh, and that's easily achievable with a just making a 90 degree angle. Alright guys, we're going to make the bracket to attach the black support bar to your factory area where the old support bar used to go. Uh, currently, um, I have this zip tied right here just to hold it up but the old design was bolted in through here. The new design bolts in on this corner down here. So we want to make a bracket that comes here, goes out, curves down, and bolts in at the back over here. I went to Home Depot. I picked up these thin aluminum brackets. I'm not too sure what they're for. There was a bunch of like um, tie down, like metal random brackets. This was 80 cents, got two of them. This will be perfect. It's gonna bolt in here, and then it's gonna bend around and bolt in down there. And that'll hold the black bar up perfectly. All right, so we got this bolted on. We're gonna slide this up here, and then we are going to bend this down and around to where it comes to this other side, and then we're just going to mark it and drill a hole through it, and then that'll hold that up. But right now we're gonna put the dash on, figure out exactly where the support bar needs to be. All right, so we're on the passenger side right now. Um, I've got one bolt up top holding it in, and then we are getting the bracket hooked up to the dash to figure out exactly where it needs to be so we can make the bracket um, line up perfectly here. Um, so this ended up being um, kind of a bitch. I've been fighting with it for probably for like 20 minutes or so because my black bracket was bent a little bit. I didn't realize that the bracket actually slides in here from in the back. So you have to make sure it's perfectly straight. Um, otherwise it won't slide in. And then this bolt you see right here is holding the bracket to the dash. Um, if you look in from the top, uh, you can kind of see the bolt head down here. And then you can see the bracket. So up here where my finger is moving, that's the that's the factory one. So we have to make it come from out here and then curve down around right here. You can see the metal bracket here. Uh, so now we need to bend this down. And bend this all the way down and then we are going to mark it right there and then we're that's where we're going to drill our hole and then we can also trim it so you can't see it anymore all right so the bracket is all on there um sorry i got close in the lighting uh, it sticks out, just need to clear this when it's not so dark. Here's around this side. You can see how it just bolts into the top. Uh, you won't need, remember, you don't need a nut and bolt for this one. Uh, you can just use your factory bolt and just bolt it through there. And then I bent it around and bolted it into the back right here. Um, with the bracket slipping through um, the steering column, there's not a lot of room to fuck it up on this side, so it should already be aligned up pretty well. Uh, if you look down here, hang on, let me get some better lighting. Okay. So if you look down here, 
you have these two bolt holes and then those two. So the bracket needs to come all the way up and then you can just see how it's all molded to just go together. So um, got to bend this all the way up. On the driver's side, uh, mine's, I took the bracket off, but I learned this doesn't like being in there super tight. Um, so originally I slid it all the way in as far as it goes. And then I noticed where the dash bolts up on the bottom side of each side. Uh, I was having to pull the dash too far down to try to get it to bolt up. Uh, so it wasn't quite lining up right. So um, do yourself a favor and don't completely bolt uh, these super tight. Um, leave it a little bit loose so you can slide it in and out with a little bit of flex. All right, guys. So I'm in here right now. Um, I'm currently working on the wiring for this. And I can't for the life of me figure out why the um, why the display right here won't light up. So when I plug the key in, I turn it forward, uh, we get that blimp of power. The gauges go up, they go down, and then nothing happens. It doesn't matter if I turn the car on. Um, it doesn't matter. I check power, I have power. Um, but I just, after probably like 20 minutes of freaking just messing with it. I accidentally bumped the blinker and then check this out. Well, that's the right blinker and here's the left blinker. So definitely got a uh, power going from the left blinker to the wrong spot or something's going on. All right so I'm pretty sure I figured out my problem. Um, I, I was looking at the blinker setup and the blinker setup's correct. So, uh, I wasn't too sure why that was happening. Uh, I pulled out my voltmeter. Um, uh, you're supposed to have the pink, uh, the pink line coming out of your gauge cluster. Uh, that's supposed to be, um, ignition. Uh, ignition power and then the orange is supposed to be a constant 12 volt. Uh, well, they both have power so I knew that's not an issue. Uh, as of right now, I've got my positive end plugged into the 12 volt where it's supposed to be. And then if I take the ground, um, just kind of stab it into the chassis right here, uh, you can see I've got 11.8 volts. Um, and then where I'm pulling my ground from, uh, the directions say for um, for B9, or so sorry, so B10, or B11 black wire and B15 black wire, uh, they're supposed to go to the clear connector from the third gen uh, number 9 or black connector number 10, and that's what I have it doing. Uh, this is clear connector this is number nine this was snipped right here and then I soldered into it and then used heat shrink uh, so right now I got some of the wire bare showing um, but when I stab uh, the ground voltmeter into it um, I'm not getting any any uh, power so uh, right now we've narrowed it down to the ground so I'm gonna strip this down uh, figure out if my solder broke and then we're going to test it on just this wire and if it's not getting any ground um, then you know no big deal i'm going to run another ground wire off the chassis like over here i've got one uh, i got a beefy 10 gauge off of that so um, if that's the case i'll just run another 10 gauge and then uh, i'll ground these out and then hopefully that fixes our problem all right so um i ended up just rewiring the ground. Um, I got new 10 gauge, uh, drilled it to my firewall. You can kind of see it back here. And then I just did a quick um, butt clamp uh, just to test it out before I do any soldering. Um, but hoping this works. So Ta-da! That 
is awesome. So, we have, um, we're reading correct battery now, that's cool. Um, the gas isn't set up, but now uh, I know this cluster has 127,000 miles on it, so that's cool. Um, I would love to start the car right now, but it's, you know what, fuck it. Make sure it's in park. All right, so still no signal, um, but we got oil pressure. Um, uh, alternator works. The temperature might work, but. Who knows? Um, I was really looking for the tack though. Um, that's what I was hoping would work. But it's it's midnight right now, so I can't exactly go for a drive. Um, but that's ah, that's progress. That's one thing down. Okay, so for your lights, um, you take the brown wire from your headlight switch and you attach it to the brown wire for your uh, dimmer switch right there. You're just gonna attach those two together and then that's it. For the green wire that comes out of your dimmer switch, you're gonna wire that into that, the gray wire coming from your cluster. Uh, so I did that right now. I'm trying to set it up. Uh, all right, so I've got it plugged in, my headlights are on and you can't really tell but the the lights work and they're working with the dimmer switch they're on now i'm scrolling the dimmer switch down all the way down and they're off uh, so this is exciting so that's finally figured out now i just got to figure out the tack and then we are pretty much done all right, guys, uh, so I'm right in here right now trying to figure out exactly what it's going to take to get the gas tank working and then um, the speedometer or the, uh, the tachometer because uh, right now all I'm getting is oil pressure and then coolant temperature sensor and then battery. That's because I'm using the PSI harness and I've opted in for uh, the optional, I don't know if you can see that, but those two wires. Um, this is for the 98 tow 2 f body for water temp and oil pressure. Um, but that's all it works for. So to get the full amount of information to your gauge cluster, um, I was reading on the forums. And they said to take um, wire number two out of your um, your OBD2 plug from your PSI harness, which is the tan wire, um, and splice into that and run that into the gray wire you have on here, uh, which is pulling all of your information. Let's see, so that's... Um, So B6 gray, uh, 1036 IPC class two serial data from LS1 PCM. All right, so we're gonna splice into, uh, into this, and then we're gonna run it into B6 in the back of here, and then I'm just gonna take out what's in there, um, because what's in there right now is I'm pretty sure what's pulling the, uh, the temperature. So uh, with that, we'll be able to get the full amount of information for it. And then that'll take care of the tachometer. My speedometer is not going to work because I have the Turbo 400 and I have to get the right speed sensor for this. And then to get the fuel to work, I was thinking that I had to run a wire from the... I have a 4th gen plastic fuel tank from a 2000 
to come out. And I was thinking I was gonna have to run a wire from that to the gauge cluster, but with the 9902 gauge clusters, it actually pulls the gas tank information from the PCM. So to get um, the information to the PCM, I'm gonna have to run a wire from the from the fuel level sender, and I'm gonna have to run it all the way into, you wanna run it into the um, the red one. Uh, so you have a blue one and then you have a red one. So you need to run it into the red one, and it's gonna be pinhole number 54. So this is uh, PSI's harness, and since that's not something they worry about is getting people with Camaro gauge clusters to work, they actually don't have a wire in there right now. Uh, so I'm gonna run one from the gas tank all the way um, and then I'm going to have to find a way to get a pin in there uh, for pin 54 on the red one. And then once that has the information, it'll actually transmit the information from the wire we spliced in here into the gray wire for this. So then it should get all the information in. Alright, so right now we're going to do a test just to see if that's true. I cut the um, wire out of pin two on this, that's the tan one, and then I spliced it uh, into the gray wire that goes into the gauge cluster. So I just kind of, I have those touching right now, hoping to see if that works. If it works, then that means we should have our tack working right now. All right. So that wasn't very hard at all. Um, gotta love the internet and all its useful information. So now I just gotta make this permanent. Uh, since there's nothing going to this, that makes this uh, useless. So now I just have to uh, splice, connect this back to this and then splice the gray one in there as well. And then uh, from there, we're gonna be good to go. All right, so. Right now, I have my OBD2 uh, Bluetooth scanner uh, plugged in, uh, just to make sure I'm getting data from that. And then I also have it plugged into the dash because we spliced it. Uh, so right now, uh, we are getting information from the serial data wire for the OBD2. Now we're just gonna make sure that the dash still gets information. <laughs> Alright, so we are good. We have tachometer. Right now I'm trying to figure out how to get the dome lights to work. So I went to austinsthirdgen.org. Uh, you can find all your wiring schematics for that. Uh, in here I learned that my dome lights are controlled by the white wire uh, that's coming out of the body harness. And then uh, from there, I know that the uh, control switch for the dome light is on the dimmer switch for the fourth gen one, and that's the gray one uh, that comes out. So I connected the gray one to the white one from the body harness, and then if you, you know, click, click the knob down, see it's giving me my interior lights, and then... I'm also getting my dome light. So that's all worked out. It's pretty sweet. Stabbed myself with a, the sharp end of a, a wire. It's blood, sweat, and tears, baby. Blood, sweat, and tears. Previously, I said that you're just gonna connect the one brown wire from your um, your light switch to your uh, your uh, your dimmer switch, um, but ignore that. So I forgot that the brown wires um, that come out of your body harness, one of them controls your taillights. So without that, I wasn't having any um, 
running lights when I turn my headlights on. So that means the ones in the back weren't lit up. And then the other brown wire that comes out of here, I'm still not too sure what it does, but I'm assuming it needs power too. Uh, so I just went ahead and soldered all four wires together. Uh, so now uh, when I hit the headlight switch, my headlights come on. And then you can't really see it back there, but my tail lights are coming on too. So uh, that's good. Now we've got running lights. All right, guys. So I've got everything all buttoned up now. Uh, sorry I didn't show me putting everything back together. I just figured if you have a dash, chances are you probably pulled it out so you know it, how it goes back together. Uh, it's really simple. The faceplate snaps in, the stereo. Um, I kept my original stereo. I really didn't even have to do anything with that. Center console literally bolts right into where the old one bolted in. Um, the glove box was the hardest part. Um, it's still a little jankity. Um, the, everything just pops in. Uh, but just want to kind of give it a little ending because I'm done for right now. There's going to be a part two, but... Got my stereo in. Alright, so stereo works. Um, gauge cluster. Uh, just gotta kind of twist the knob. Uh, so that all works. Uh, the dimmer works. Um, there's quite a bit of lights. My blinker is... I don't know why that's stuck on. Um, everything works. Got temperature, oil pressure, battery, uh, ABS. I need to ground that out. Uh, airbag. I need to do that. The check the check gauges is on right now because the gas tank isn't hooked up, but that's coming. I ordered pins to hook up the the gas wires. That's the only reason I'm not doing that. And I figured I'd button everything up in the meantime because shipping estimated time, the guy said three weeks and I don't want to wait that long. So um, everything's all done, cars all together. And I think it looks really great. Um, I'm going to include everything. Oh yeah, it's another thing. Uh, dome light. Dome light's all good. It's controlled by that. So uh, your under ones. There's more, but I I broke a lot of bulbs to it. Uh, and then I I don't think you can tell down here, but I hooked up a cooling fan switch that came out really clean. I like that as well. Uh, so that's everything. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comment below. Uh, I'm going to make sure I include uh, as much as I could. Um, I'm going to have all the wiring schematics, everything I used to get me through this. So everything should come out pretty great. Uh, but that's everything. Thanks for watching.